Hi folks, my name is Ian Palangio. I'm a business productivity solution specialist in Microsoft here in Australia, uh, based out of Sydney. Uh, I'm here with Christian Kelsing uh, at TechEd uh, in uh, the beautiful Gold Coast in uh, Queensland uh, to talk about uh, office business applications and extending the value of your uh, ERP system. Uh, so Christian, if you want to uh, introduce yourself and give us a bit of background on, uh, on yeah, you, that'd be yeah, great. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Christian Kelsing and uh, I'm probably the odd one out here at TechEd in the sense that I actually work for an SAP call partner, so Extend Technologies, and our core business is to implement and resell SAP. Um, so you might be asking, you know, obviously what the heck am I doing here? And I guess first of all, my, my, my personal background is, is in the Microsoft stack, and I've been doing .NET related technologies for the good part of a decade, and I've been specializing in SharePoint and Office for the last six, seven years. Um, six, seven years, and, and I've got an interesting gig within X10 promoting Microsoft technologies as, as an application platform within the SAP installed base. So, so what happens is that, that companies go out and spend millions of dollars on, on their ERP, and they don't always get the return on investment. And, and there's obviously a lot of factors in play there, but, but one of the main issues is around usability. And, and there's gotten the research out there showing that more than 40% of ERP implementations got user adoption issues. So, so that's what we're really trying to do, that when you've got this wonderful productivity stack in Office and SharePoint, you've got tools that are already designed around people, they're already out there in front of the users, so we're really trying to drive some of that SAP functionality into the Office stack and, and address those user adoption issues that way. Okay, yeah, it certainly rings true, that story around uh, user adoption uh, issues around, uh, around some ERP type systems. Um, it reminds me of a meeting I had with uh, one of the utilities here in Australia, and I was meeting with the, uh, the CFO, the Chief Financial Officer, uh, who was actually bankrolling the whole SAP implementation. And his biggest fear was not that the product wasn't capable, mm -hmm. or the processes weren't yeah. going to be done. His major concern was that people were not going to use the system that he built. Mm -hmm. um, and so he was really concerned about other executives not wanting to use SAP and not using the functionality that he was really investing in. Mm -hmm. So his big concern about the whole project was actually making sure people used it. Uh, yeah. and, get, and I guess if people don't use the system, there's no ROI. That's right, right on that's it. right. So, um, so we're going to talk about uh, office business applications today, or OBAs. Mm -hmm. um, and so, as an office specialist, I think OBAs are one of the um, um, one of the interesting aspects of Microsoft Office and how it can be extended to be the interface for other um, for other systems or for for um, for applications. Um, so, do you want to give us a bit of background on uh, on OBAs and maybe how they can be used to extend? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so, office business applications really sort of a broad term that 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 that. Uh, includes all solutions where you're using Office as a platform of delivering the functionality to the end users. So, so you're really quite often integrating back-end line of business systems, driving that functionality into the Office stack, simply because you've got those tools out there in front of the users, so you're not bringing yet another UI in front of the users. So that means that it's actually an excellent opportunity to get more value out of your ERP system, because what actually happens is, once you put something like SAP in there, it becomes your transactional backbone of your business. It's your one integrated solution across all your functional areas, HR, finance, supply chain, you name it. It's your one single source of truth. So you can, you can obviously see how that quickly becomes quite a valuable strategic asset. Yeah. And the key to unlocking the value in that asset is to bring it out to more users. And that's where the office business applications come in. So, so you've got this UI that's already in front of the users, You've got the SAP at the back end, so we're really just marrying up, marrying up the two and leveraging the best of both worlds and, and not introducing any new technologies or tools. And right, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I know um, uh, we have some data around Microsoft's enterprise customers, and I know that um, an average enterprise customer that Microsoft has, they have 32 line of business applications uh, with 31 different interfaces. And so as an end user, you know, it's not a really unified experience. Um, and if you think about, you know, just even copy and paste and switching applications. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a training aspect to it all, where you have to train your users, say a thousand users, across 30 applications. You know, that's duplicating a whole lot of effort around that, so mm -hmm. not a lot of value. So, so Office, is, I see, is a great tool that people know that can extend applications into and be a common place to do all that. Can you give us some examples of, of Office business applications that, you've, yeah, that yeah, you've seen? Yeah, so, so, so we've obviously been doing this with customers for quite some time now. And I guess, first of all, what I want to say here is that that we're not really trying to address, um, we're not trying to build solutions for, for the power users off the line of business system. 
So, so you've got your finance users using SAP, or you've got your project managers using the project management tools. They're power users of those tools, and they're fine. They're probably better off in the line of business interface. What we're really trying to say is, well, typically, when you've got some, a long business process, there's always a few steps in that process that sort of sticks out, and you need to get some sort of involvement from casual users. And that's where office business applications come in. And just, just a couple of examples is, uh, uh, one thing we've had great success with lately is actually taking purchase order approvals into Outlook and raising purchase orders from within Outlook. Mm -hmm. so, so, so obviously, purchase orders is part of a bigger procurement process and you've got procurement people involved and you've got finance people doing the invoicing and the rest of it. They do all of that in their tool of choice. But one part of that process is to get the actual purchase order approved by someone out in the business. So what we're really doing here is that regardless of what line of business system they're doing the purchasing through, they'll more than likely always be notified through email in the Outlook anyway. Yep. So why not empower them to actually do the approval from within Outlook so they don't have to leave that interface and log into another system. So, so basically having an Outlook add-in, an office business application that recognizes uh, the purchase orders when they come in and then renders a pane where the, where the user can actually approve that purchase order directly into the uh, ERP system. Mm. Uh, another example we've been doing is, is timesheeting. So I'm, I'm sure you've and heard people complain things, about purchase that. orders, timesheets, the things yep. every organization has, e right? Exactly, and, 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 and you hear people complain about their timesheeting systems in a lot of places. And, yeah. and, and we've taken a sort of a different approach and say, well, let's try and use Excel as a front, front end for timesheeting because everybody knows how to use Excel. It's really easy to cop and pay, copy and paste. You know, that's probably how a lot of people do the timesheets. Yep. And the great thing about Excel is it works offline. So if you're out in the field and need to do your timesheet, you, 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 you can do that and then you submit it once, you, once you're within uh, connectivity. And again, you can have that directly integrated with your ERP right. system. Actually, it reminds me of a customer um, who's an SAP customer and, and I work with their IT teams quite a bit. And um, I know every month they keep all their project work um, in Outlook as mm -hmm. they, you know, appointments and what time they put against it. And at the end of the month, they have to copy and paste from Outlook into SAP CATS to keep track of all mm -hmm. their time tracking. And so I see a, an office business application there would be that, well, rather than copying and pasting at the end of the month, when you add it into Outlook, it just, yep. that's where it's done, and it's put it back into SAP directly from there, right? That's, that's exactly what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right.